Hey everyone, welcome to Entertainment Weekly's What to Watch, the show where EW staff help you solve your viewing dilemmas. I'm your host, Jared Hall, and I'm joined today by who many consider the Umbrella Academy of Entertainment Weekly, senior music editor Alex Suskin, TV critic Kristen Baldwin, and digital news writer Christian Holub. Hello to all of you. Uh, so in case my subtle reference was was lost on anyone watching. We're starting off today's show with Netflix's The Umbrella Academy. The seven Hargreaves siblings are back for season two of the hit superhero series, which is out right now. Now, Christian, you are a fan of this comic book adaptation. You've seen the new season. You've spoken with the cast. You wrote uh, the fantastic digital cover story that was out this week. So how do you think season two holds up since we saw the gang destroy the moon? They caused an apocalypse, traveled back in time, you know, a typical Monday. Yeah. Uh, season two is really interesting, be, uh, partly because it's so different um, from season one, kind of in its structure and in its look. Um, you know, season one was set in the present and it was um, uh, just an adaptation of the first arc of the comic, introduces you to all the characters and, and the basic dynamic. And season two, by contrast, they spend the entire season in the 60s. Um, so the, the production design is, is totally different. The, the vibes are different. There are new characters they're interacting with from the 60s. So uh, the first season, there was, there was kind of some skepticism that people had about that one. Do you think this new season makes up for that? I think so. Um, you know, at least from what I remember, some of the skepticism about season one comes from, say, the quasi-ancestral romance between two right. of the adopted siblings, um, which is much more on the back burner this season. One thing that was really entertaining to me about season two is um, there are various, there's a couple great scenes where they're all together, which I think are like the highlight. But there's also a lot of scenes of like a couple of them split apart and they like, they feel more like siblings and, and family members, like two of, the, two, two of the main guys, Luther played by Tom right. Hopper, Diego played by David Castaneda. They have a lot of see scenes together this season that are, are, I think are very fun and are very brotherly and kind of making fun of each other for various things. Uh, moving right along, Kristen, uh, uh, well, and to all of you, we've got more of my favorite fuzzy friends to talk about, <laughs> and I don't mean those little lint balls I've pulled off my sweaters. I've had a lot of time in quarantine, you guys. Uh, I'm, of course, referring to Kermit, Miss Piggy, Gonzo, Beaker, and the rest of the most Muppets Gang, Disney Plus has a new show, Muppets Now, which has been generating a lot of buzz. Uh, so, Kristen, how is this show different from previous Muppet iterations? And do you think people will or why people keep returning uh, to these iconic characters? Well, this is different, certainly very different from the last version of the Muppets that we mm -hmm. saw on TV, which was called The Muppets. And it was a primetime show on ABC, sort of a mockumentary a la The Office. This yeah. is a return to form in that it's Muppets now is sort of a sketch show. It's very sort of fast paced, geared at children, but also a lot of things that kids will love. Uh, every episode starts with Scooter on his laptop trying to upload the latest episode and he's getting Zoom calls and IMs and, you know, texts from all the different Muppets. Fozzie's pitching him shows and, you know, Miss Piggy's demanding Final Cut, all that. And then, Shocker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, it, it, it goes into a series of sketches, some of which are recurring, which are really fun. Miss Piggy has a lifestyle show called Lifestyle with Miss Piggy. Ah, uh, and she has know. a guest, Tay Diggs, is on every week with her. And he, uh, he will try new self-care techniques with her. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Tay Diggs, uh, but he, there are a lot of cameos in this show, right? Yeah, there's an up uh, a series within the show called Mup Close and Personal, where ah. um, Kermit will interview celebrities. So he interviews, you know, uh, RuPaul. We see Albert e. Plaza. We see uh, Seth Rogen. Linda Cardellini shows up every week. And it's quite remarkable that this franchise, these characters, have been around for going on 50 years, maybe at 50 years. How is it that they keep coming up with fresh ideas? I mean, I think when you when you create classic characters, they can continue to live on because people love them. And when people interact with the Muppets, like real people interact with them, they see the characters. I was fortunate enough to interview the Muppets and I was yeah. like starstruck. I was talking to Miss Piggy. It was amazing. Like they are real. 
and they have done and they're quick witted they are quick witted they're oh so that's fast. the other thing yeah. all a lot of this show is unscripted it's improv they've done a great job creating a through line a consistent through line with these characters at, and and yet letting them adapt to every new generation you know and mm-hmm. so they they remain true to themselves but they always live in the modern world Ah, live in the modern world and in my heart. I love them so much. Well, <laughs> okie dokie, we have to take a quick break. You'll definitely want to get information for our next must watch of the week. We'll be right back. Welcome back to What to Watch. Before we move on to our next show, Emmy nominations were this week. Kristen, which snub hurt you to your core and which one made you gasp with delight? Well, the snub that hurt me to my core, and I might like get worked up about it uh, as we talk about it now, <laughs> I don't know how after four straight nominations, voters suddenly decided that Bob Odenkirk wasn't one of the best actors on TV, yet... Better Call Saul is nominated for Outstanding Drama Series. And in terms of the nomination that made me the happiest, I mean, there are a lot of great ones, but I was so thrilled to see Jean Smart get a nomination for Watchmen. I mean, she deserves an Emmy for the way she fell through that trap door. Oh, right. I could not agree with you more. All right. Well, we talked a bit earlier about the Muppets. And while Kermit might say it's not easy being green, it is easy being Queen. We're talking, of course, about the queen herself, Beyonce. The flawless triple, quadruple, let's just say ultimate threat has a new visual album out now on Disney Plus called Black is King. Now, Alex, uh, we film these episodes in advance, full disclosure, so none of us have gotten to experience the inevitable spectacle just yet. But Bay is constantly exceeding our expectations. What are you anticipating? You know, it's really hard to not go into a Beyonce project without high expectations. You know, what she's continued to do throughout her career is really change the narrative around how the Black experience is being told. And since this particular project is really built off a lot of the work she did on The Lion King, both in the film and also with the soundtrack, I think you're going to expect a lot more of that. Um, You know, she spoke about, or I should say the statement announcing the film, uh, spoke about how this particular visual album, so to speak, is going to present elements of both Black history and African tradition with a modern twist. She has already released Black Parade. Uh, Do you think we'll get even maybe more new music or will it stick to that Mm -hmm. album? Yeah, my guess is there will be more new music. Um, There will very likely be music from The Lion King, the GIF soundtrack as well, along with cameos um, from some of the artists who she had in on that album. You know, she had Wizkid, Burnham Boy, a lot of other um, artists who make up the African diaspora. Um, in addition to that, I'm, you know, I'm willing to bet we might get some reimagined versions of some mm-hmm. of her, um, either Lion King work or even older work. Here's the wild thing about Beyonce. She uh, does these projects largely in secret. Uh, <laughs> how the heck does she pull these off? <laughs> um, NDAs that are as thick as a textbook, probably. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, all jokes aside, I think it really comes down to the respect she garners from the creative community. You know, right. it's not only what she asks of her collaborators to, you know, keep this secret, but honestly, a leak of what she's working on threatens to kind of I'd say undermine her greater mission. I think back to the 2013 self-titled uh, Beyonce album and how big of a surprise that was. They came out of nowhere. Nobody really knew about it. And I'm thinking about how much the impact of that would have been blunted if people were talking about that ahead of time. Um, and instead we got this monumental, you know, gorgeous album that was not only a total shock, but absolutely beautiful. And um, she uh, has continued to do that with all of her projects since then. So I think it really comes down to respect she garners in the creative community. It's pretty remarkable how many times she has changed the game. So when did it dawn on each of you just how much of a cultural powerhouse she is? Uh, I mean, I I hate to be repetitive, but it's got to be the 2013 self-titled. I mean, um, I I think that that really stands apart. Um, As Alex was saying, everything she's done since is uh, because of that album. A lot of the entire way that the music industry works now is because of that album. Um, The fact that Taylor Swift can just surprise drop an album now and and nobody's really (laughs) phased at all because that's just how music comes out now 
music did not come out that way before like December 2013. She kind of invented it. And especially on that visual album, that worked better for me than than Lemonade, which I think was trying to um, its eyes were bigger than its stomach, maybe. Like, it just didn't work for me kind of as, like, a movie, whereas, like, having those, like, th- like 13 short films format uh, worked, a little, worked a little better. Kristen, wrap it up for us. I'm going to have to go back to Destiny's Child. I feel like Beyonce was going to be uh, some sort of spiritual mentor to me when, when she uttered the words, the shoes on my feet, I bought them. <laughs> I'm wearing, yeah. I bought him. Yeah, Charlie's rock. Angels I'm song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I depend on me if I want it. And you know what? Preach. Folks, it's time to uh, ring the alarm. This concludes today's episode of What to Watch. And hold up a special thanks to my irreplaceable guests who run the world Alex Suskin, Kristen Baldwin, and Kristen Holub. I'm crazy in love with all of you and quite frankly. <laughs> I can see your halos. <laughs> and yes, maybe I've been drinking. Share it all. And I know you're haunting me. I must be haunting you. Do you like all that? All right, see you next time on What to Watch. XO!